you have the first hymn of the day. The first hymn of the day is hymn number 135. 
Our Father, we come to you this morning. Thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege we have of serving you, for the opportunities we have to be your witness. And I pray, Father, that we might be faithful witnesses for you. I pray, Father, for those that are here this morning. We thank you for the ones that have gone through surgery and are able to be back with us. And uh, we thank you for your healing power, your watch care over us. We pray, Father, for those that are sick and unable to be here. We pray, Lord, you comfort them. And we pray, Lord, for those that are traveling, that you give them travel mercies. Father, we are grieved this morning at the loss of loved ones. And we pray, Father, that you might uh, comfort their families and lift them up to we pray, Father, for the many who are suffering in the results of these earthquakes and floods. We ask you, Lord, to be with them and help them to recover and to regain and, Lord, to understand that uh, Material things can disappear in a moment, but only the things of you that you provide are, are permanent. And we ask you, Lord, to help us to remember that, that we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we can know who holds tomorrow. We trust you, Lord, for all things. We don't always understand, Lord, but we understand that you are in charge. We pray, Father, you bless our service this morning. Guide us in all that we do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. your mic down, Joanne. Uh, is it Corinthians for today? Yes. Janet? Yes. Huh? First Corinthians. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, everybody, if you're glad to be here on this gorgeous Lord's Day, say amen. 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 Um, it's supposed to be up near 80 uh, Wednesday, so... But that's still below uh, freezing, you know, below 80s freezing. So, uh, I'm I'm just not here today. I don't know where I am. Off in space somewhere. But okay, uh, this um, verse for today is First Corinthians 13, six through seven. Number six is rejoice, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Uh, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth for all things, endureth to all things. And there's a church sign in the Central Baptist Church. Uh, forgive your enemies. It messes with their minds. <laughs> so, that's about right. So, anyway, it's, it's good seeing everybody. Hey, we're kind of a few in numbers, but it's good seeing everybody here today. Frank, it's so good having you back in church. And Ken, we've been praying for you, so it's good seeing you too, you and Ken Sylvia. So. Joanne, ah. I, I just wanted to thank the good Lord and thank uh, everybody that sends their prayers and stuff. And it's just uh, quite an eye-opener, and uh, I should be good as you in a few months. And it was a pretty scary situation, but um, I basically had... Had my flight number, but they didn't give me a boarding pass, so <laughs> I just want to thank to everybody. Thank you. Delay, delay. You didn't get to go, thank you, Jesus. Well, we love you both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're going through because my son went to oh, some of the same things. But anyway, it's so good having you here. Again. So uh, everybody's home folk, right? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, okay. So in Sunday school, we had 14. Uh, so, you know, you come early, you can have coffee and donuts and tacos. So, uh, 
anyway, uh, and, and Mr. Bubba is our Sunday school teacher since Mr. Ken has got the fumies. So uh, it, it's really, it's really eye-opening when you listen to the two different types of guys. And I, I, I love hearing Bubba talk. So, and we still have our board of concern. If you know someone who is ill, having problems for whatever reason, we'll put their name on the board and just continue to pray for each and every one. And I know y'all have seen the news about the earthquake in Turkey and uh, mm -hmm. Syria. So we just need to pray for those people. That they're just, I can imagine stuff like that. So I'm, I'm thankful I live in the United States in San Antonio right here. So, uh, okay, and then Wednesday at 6.30 is uh, prayer service and Bible study. And so uh, is anybody having a birthday, getting any younger? Nobody's getting younger. Okay, how about anniversaries? Do we have an anniversary? Karen. Karen and Kenneth have an anniversary. Karen has an anniversary. Yeah, they're having an anniversary. Come on, guys. Come on down. Come on, kiddos. Yes.
Dear Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for this beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for the people that you have sent back to us, that you have touched and healed, Lord. I pray that you continue doing so. Dear Lord, we ask that you be with this offering, that you bless it, you bless each one who gives, you bless this church and what they do with it, and you bless those that are not able to give, Lord. For we know that all things are in your hands. And we do especially pray for the tragedies around the world, that you would help these people, help them get through it, and Lord, that, that we might help in some way if possible. And we give you the praise and glory for all we have and all we are, for with you we have nothing. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Anything? We're grateful to have you back. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We did go to a little church service out there, country church, well, cowboy church they call it. It was really nice. Hmm? No one's wanting to sing? Let me see. Do you want to play one? Okay. How long has it been? Yeah, I'll try. I don't know. You tell me what you like it. Good man, apparently, or 
all reports. Uh, not only was he high estate, had a good man, but uh, he had a problem. Everybody's got problems. He had leprosy. And because he was a good man, and, uh, you know, they made a few excursions into Israel and brought back captives. And he had a young girl that was uh, obeyed for his uh, wife. And uh, apparently she thought a lot of it and uh, had compassion on it because she said, oh, if he was just in Israel, the prophet there could heal him of his leprosy. Well, the word got to the king of Syria. We'll carry on here. Well, I want you a little background for you. The king of Syria, he says, well, so I'll just send down with my general to the king of Syria and have him heal him. So he loaded him up with a bunch of treasure and sent him to, uh, uh, wrote a letter to the king, and, uh, sent it to him and says, I sent you my servant, Laban, who I want you to heal him of his leprosy. So uh, Laban was not uh, ashamed to go to the king. And so he went and the king was very upset because he says, I can't heal anybody. Uh, and he just tried to make a quarrel with me. And uh, he read his clothes and got all bent out of shape. And uh, the word came to Elisha, the prophet, about the king, and he said, well, just send him to me. <laughs> so this is what we're going to read about here in a minute. Uh, in the ninth verse of the second chapter, we read, And it came to pass, when they were gone over to Elisha, whoa, that's the wrong chapter. I'm not in chapter How did I get this up? Hey, I read this yesterday, and this is what I wrote down. I hardly ever make mistakes. <laughs> So let me just uh, paraphrase it here. I won't get it exactly right. But Naaman, the host, the captain of the host of Syria, who was a leper, he came to the house of Elisha, the prophet. And uh, Elisha didn't even bother to go out and talk to him. He sent his servant out to him. He says, go and wash seven times in the river Jordan and you'll be healed. Okay, so we're going to talk about pride. Now, this is the subject of the, the message this morning. You see, Naaman was a proud man. He was a man of authority. He, how proud did he was very upset. The Bible tells us, and we find it where it is, that uh, the prophet didn't even come out and talk to him or do nothing. He just sent a message out, served out, and says, go wash the river Jordan seven times. And he was real mad, real upset. He said, we've got better rivers than that in Syria than the Jordan I can wash it. And he went away very angry because uh, his pride had been offended. You ever have your pride offended by something that somebody says? You know, well, we do. We get offended sometimes by cause of pride. Uh, 
had so left that he was going to leave without his healing because he was too proud to do what the prophet instructed him to do. We're going to get to our case here in a minute. A lot of people are that way today. They realize their lost condition. They realize that they are separated from God because of sin. But they are too proud to humble themselves before God and acknowledge that they need help. Well, Ammon couldn't heal himself of his leprosy. He couldn't do anything about it. And his servant, who was a fairly wise servant, he came to him and said, My father, if he had instructed you to do some great deed, would you not have done it? If he had told you to go climb the mountain, would you have done that? Yeah, he would have done that. It would have been uh, <coughs> compatible with his pride to do some great deed to be healed. But no one washes the river, or any kid could do that. There's no pride in that. There's nothing I can brag about that I've done. Sometimes we get that way about our salvation. We don't want it because it's too simple to receive. We don't have anything to brag about in our salvation. We don't have anything we can boast about what we have done to deserve it, to earn it. And so they have a servant says, well, how much more then if he says, go and wash and be clean? Now, Naaman was not only a proud man, he was a wise man, a sensible man. And he hearkened to the voice of his servant. And he went to the river Jordan, and he washed seven times, and his leprosy was healed. Because he forsook his pride and did what he needed to do, to be clean. How about us today? Are we too proud to forsake our pride and acknowledge that we're lost and on our way to hell and can't save ourselves? That we can't cleanse ourselves of our unrighteousness? That we can't save ourselves? I can't. You can't. Jesus can. But there's nothing about it for us to brag about that we can be pat ourselves on the back and say, look what I have done. We have to come to Him acknowledging that we are incapable of healing ourselves. And there are so many people out in the world today that are in that condition. I've heard so many people say that I live a good life. I'm doing everything right. And maybe you are. But you're still a sinner. And you're still lost. You could go to church every Sunday. You could give 20% of what you take in rather than 10. You could do everything just right. You can live a good life. You can be uh, uh, faithful to your family and to your job and everything. And you can still go to hell if you don't repent of your sins and receive Jesus as Savior. Amen. You have to humble yourselves if you're going to be saved. That's the requirement. Damn He's a pretty good sized guy. He was a pretty important character. And he was proud of his position. He was proud of who he was. But he was also willing to listen when his servant said, you'd have done something big for it, wouldn't you? Well, why not do something small? Something simple. He didn't give you a big task to accomplish. There's nothing you can brag about. 
but you can do it. You see, you can't brag about receiving Jesus. You can't brag about how a chore it was for you to gain your salvation. All you can do is acknowledge your inadequacy and ask Him to come into your heart and into your life and save you. We're going to look at uh, something that I, maybe I can't find this time in James, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> I hope my Bible. Uh, I went to use this Bible and used the Bible at home, but surely it's the uh, same Bible. It should have been the same chapter. Let's see if this would agree. James chapter 4. And we we'll start at verse 6. Well, let's start at verse 5. He says here, Do you think that the Scripture saith that they, the Spirit that dwelleth in us, and blessed us to hit me? But he give us more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but give us grace under the humble. <clears throat> you see, we are sinners saved by grace. We are saved by the free, <coughs> unearned favor of God. There's not a thing I can do to earn my salvation. The only thing I can do is acknowledge that I'm a sinner and ask Jesus to come into my heart and save me. To acknowledge that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That He did die on the cross for my sins. That He paid the price for my transgressions. And I don't have to. We read on. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You see, the devil wants us to Hang on to our pride. He wants us to make feel like we are somebody, that we have accomplished something on our own, that we have done it ourselves. How many self-made men have you heard about? I did it all by myself. No, you didn't. All of us have had help in everything that we've accomplished. None of us have made it all by ourselves. Amen. And we need to acknowledge that we need, can't make salvation, we can't get to heaven all by ourselves. We need help. So draw an eye to God, and He will draw an eye to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Uh, how about that? Have you done that? We have to acknowledge our guilt. We have to realize that <coughs> we're lost. We're on our way to hell. And we can't do anything about it ourselves. We are totally, 100% dependent upon the grace of God for our salvation. And the grace of God says that the only one that can take your sins and cleanse you of your unrighteousness is Jesus Christ, my Son. I sent Him to bear your burdens. He died on the cross to pay the debt you owed. He rose again and he's sitting at the right hand of God to make intercession for you. But you have to come to him humbly acknowledging that you need him. Have you done that? Have you come to Christ acknowledging that you need him for your salvation? That you're lost? That you're separated? 
that you have to do it his way, you can't do it your way. Naaman would have liked to have done something he could have bragged about to get his cleansing. <clears throat> and he went away very angry, but he was given a simple task. How many people today are going away angry because I'm telling you that you can't save yourself. There's no big job you can do. All you have to do is humble yourself and let Jesus save you. Are you offended by that? If you are, listen to the voice of reason. If you could do something tremendous, why not do something simple? Why not allow Christ into your heart? Why not acknowledge your need and invite Jesus to come into your heart and save you? Why not let him in? Why stay separated in? A couple of verses in 1 John, the second chapter. Verse 16. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And the will of God is that you humble yourselves and acknowledge Jesus as Savior and Lord. That you admit that you can't save yourself. You admit that you're guilty before God. You admit that you're a sinner. And you ask Jesus to come into your heart and into your life and give you salvation. He will, you know. Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. I came not to condemn the world because the world was condemned already. I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We reject it because of pride. We don't want to feel like we're dependent upon anybody. I'm a dependent person. I depend upon Jesus. I'm not trusting in my own righteousness. I know it's unworthy. I know it's not good. I know it's a filthy rag in the sight of God. I put it away from me as far as my confidence. It's not in me. My confidence is in Jesus. I have trusted Him for my salvation. Have you? I have taken Jesus as my Lord. I have admitted that I can't do it myself. I need help. And so do you. Every one of us needs help. There is not a one of us can make heaven on our own. Have you humbled yourself before God and acknowledged that you needed Jesus, that you needed help? Have you received Him as your Savior? If you haven't, why not? Is pride holding you back? Are you so proud of who you are and what you are and not willing to acknowledge that you don't have everything? You know, without Jesus, you won't make heaven. Pride goes between you and God. Push your pride aside, it belongs to the devil and receive Jesus as your Savior. He wants to give you everlasting life. He wants to forgive your sins. You won't have anything to brag about but Jesus. Nothing you've done to brag about except that I received Jesus as my Savior. Uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for it. I'm thrilled by it. How about you? Nothing else I've done matters. If I haven't, 
received, if you haven't received Jesus, you haven't received life. And you're going to perish. It's that simple. Open yourselves and let Jesus come into your heart. Acknowledge you need him and invite him in. If you haven't done that, now is the right time to do it. Sorry I got off and couldn't find my scripture to start with. But I got the message across to you, I hope. You've all heard the story about David, the captain of the host. How he came to the prophet and was very upset. But he finally repented and was saved. And that's what you have to do. Repent and be saved. Will you do that today? Jesus is waiting. He will not turn you away. Put your pride behind you. Forget about who you are what you are. Just think about what you need. And what you need is Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would... Uh, Use this clumsy message today to touch some heart, to lead someone to acknowledge that they have been holding back because they don't want to give up their control. They're not willing to let Jesus in to save them because it means that there wouldn't be a control anymore. I thank you, Lord, that you're in control of my life. I thank you that you have saved me. And I pray, Lord, that you'd save all of those within the sound of my voice. That they might realize that pride is standing between them and eternal life. And that they might place that pride where it belongs, in the trash heap. That will be done in this invitation. I pray in Jesus' name. Let's stand together. Please turn to hymn number 189, I mean 312, hymn number 312.